This is Red Bull Paris Conquest. I'm Corbin Harris here with Chris Pastoris. Some of the most iconic Parisian skate spots right here in front of the Eiffel Tower. This is the breakdown of the quarterfinals, Chris. Yeah, what a quarterfinal, quarterfinal it was, excuse me. There's, we see Jake Wooten and Aurelien Giraud, two of the uh, most diverse and amazing skaters in the world. There you see Jake, so much power, style, and uh, speaking of power style, this guy's got a bunch of it as well. The one thing I like about these two guys in together is they're completely different skateboarders. Jake Wooden normally skates a lot of transition, big transition, concrete skate parks, pools, things like that. Yeah. This guy here doing video part tricks, a real end. Um, and just being able to skate everything in his path. That 360 flip, Chris. Yeah. He was doing it every single time. I mean, the guy's like money in the bank. He's second to Nija in terms of consistency and just the level of, of his tricks and the power and the flow. Uh, you know, Jake Wooten's amazing. A bit of a wild card, you know, just lets it fly. Uh, Aurelian's always got a game plan, so big difference there. Next matchup we've got right now, TJ Rogers, Matthias Del Olio. This is an interesting one as well. Yeah, Matthias kind of all around skater, hit a bunch of transition. TJ made this contest work for him and skated completely raw street. There you see some ledge tech tricks. And um, so it's it's amazing that TJ did what he did and ended up, you know, top 10 in a competition with basically practically no street obstacles. The, the one thing that I noticed about TJ Rod Rogers is he just floated around the course and he tried to hit absolutely every obstacle. Yeah. He had this flow where he, he started off, he hit a couple of the ledges, and then he just started to build the pace up over every single contest. Yeah. And it got him the win right there. Yeah, to take out Matias after Matias did that hard clip down the big five, that says something. That makes a statement. So uh, props to TJ. Next one, Vincent Malou from France. Gustavo. Gustavo, a little bit of uh, uh, an injury with his shoulder, so he was taking it a little easy, but it was never going to stop this guy. He was on a tear, Vincent Malou. Yeah, Vincent, I mean, he's just like so organic, so raw. You know, he's got a million different lines that no one else does. Um, you know, Gustavo obviously coming back from that injury. A little more predictable as far as what he's going to do. Vincent's a wild card, man. He's, he's a wild child. He can do so many different tricks. So, you know, half the time it just looks like he's freestyling it, which makes it fun to watch. Yeah, he totally is. Here he is, here he is on the big set as well. Oh, just coming off that. One of the most technical skaters. I think yeah. in the world on handrails and stuff. Totally, totally. Gustavo. Yeah, you see Gustavo take that slam and trying to stay away from putting that shoulder down. Uh, obviously had it dislocated a couple times. So, yeah, I think that was a difficult contest for him. A lot of big obstacles with an injured shoulder. No good. And there you go. Vince get, makes it through. The crowd, the crowd. was going absolutely <laughs> insane Bonkers. for him. Dude, I was out on the course. It was insane. <laughs> Trevor coming in next. Yeah, Hello. Trevor McClung, uh, Dario Matarolo from Argentina. And yeah, Trevor, another one, raw street skater, just broke it down, you know, section by section. Built, built on his difficulty. Obviously not really the course you'd expect him to win on, but he stuck through it, much like TJ, and made it work. The one thing that I noticed throughout the, the whole contest was slow and steady kind of won the race. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was yeah. just chipping away, building blocks over the whole thing. That was absolutely insane. Yeah, Hitting he the top of the window. Just... for the landing being not the cleanest. Um, yeah, and Trev just the switch back 180 down the big five. You know, like you said, his tricks got more and more difficult each round, which is how you have to skate in these I feel head -head like, contests. I feel like Trevor, every single time he, um, there's the breakdown of the, the world final. As we go into the women's, we'll be back with more of that. Eugenia versus Aori. Now we're talking about a seasoned vet here. 
she is a pro, skating in the biggest contest in the world. Yeah. Also, number one street skater in the world this year. Yeah, she is the world champion, and there's a good reason why. Look at that perfect 50 50 back 180 out. She's just got such control and poise. Um, you know, she favors handrail skating, so I was surprised to see her skate this course as good as she did, because it was not one handrail on the course. Yeah, exactly. Little heel flip off there. Trying to go for the kick flip at the end there. A little bit of an injury, which actually took her out of the contest. There's her uh, her partner and boyfriend, Lucas, trying to help her off the course there. Unfortunately, we, weren't be, we wouldn't be able to see her in the final. Yeah, she wanted to take that run, but just couldn't do it, she, unfortunately. She wanted Clean by sweep. a landslide, a sweep, <laughs> so uh, we wish her well. And here it is, Leticia. Yeah, Leticia just showing you why she's basically the queen of women's skateboarding. She just is, has so much experience. Uh, you know, it's comparable to a Nija or a Aurelion in terms of just her calculated approach. You know, she never looks winded. She knows exactly what she can do. She's smooth. She lands a bunch of tricks. She's got great style. Even though this was a different strategy Ooh, in this unanimous. contest, they have she goes straight through the final. Yes. Um, even though great it was job. a different different strategy contest, I, Aori coming in the final with Tisha. Obviously, she, she wasn't able to skate after that. But um, you know. The strategy still stuck. Yeah. You still had to, to keep chipping away at it. Yeah, and yeah, it's definitely um, challenging for some of the skaters who are used to handrail to others, but uh, they raised up to the challenge well. And there here we see TJ Rogers again skating against arguably one of the best contest skaters in the world. And TJ hung on as it hung with it, you know? He made himself look impressive. Uh, kept moving up the line of difficulty. It was super, super consistent. For someone that doesn't skate all that many contests or even this level in the finals a lot, he held his own. The thing with TJ is to do well in a contest, he's got to make everything. Yeah. It, it's all or nothing. It's all those ledge tricks have to be made, you know, and he lands like 80, 90% of his tricks. So there you have it. The one thing that he wasn't really able to pull off is this big set, man. It really and He just showed everyone who was boss on that, yeah, really. That 360 flip he kept doing all the time. Every time. Consistent. Yeah, cracked a few boards. Just, I think he skated three or four different setups. And uh, wasn't swayed. Not at all. It's interesting to see, though. It wasn't a sweep, you know? The judges deliberated hard. TJ almost moved on. So props to him. The crowd was happy with that. And how about the crowd, just in general? It was probably the most hyped crowd I've seen at a skateboard contest. When this guy came on, Vincent Malou, the whole place started <laughs> chanting in front of us. We couldn't even hear ourselves talk. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah, what a matchup with Vincent and Trevor. You know, um, Trevor, I think, was the underdog there. But uh, yeah, again, another guy. He's got to make all his tricks because they're tech ledge tricks. And you got a guy like Vincent Malou cruising through the course so consistently and fluid. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing that um, this head to head matchup ended up the way it did. We see Vincent with the judo air into a frontside flip into an impossible corner. <laughs> that is one of my favorite tricks, or if not my favorite trick, the whole uh, contest here yeah. in Paris. And I, I think the element of surprise was in Trevor's favor with this matchup. He did that switch back 360 and just surprised the heck out of the judges. And uh, you know, people here like, it was. People like suspense. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't the judges uh -oh, bring uh -oh. the suspense wow. this time? Yeah. Trevor, I don't think he could even believe it. He couldn't believe it himself. <laughs> he was like, well, what am I doing here? I didn't even skating contest. So there you have it, Aurelian Gerard and Trevor McClung through to the men's world final. Yeah, what, what a matchup. And, and this then we had our third place uh, competition between TJ and Vincent. TJ starting things off with that big switch 180. 
yeah, a lot of the time he sort of started off uh, on the ledges, on the blocks, and, and sort of just built his way up. Yeah. He knew he had to bring it this time, so he did start. Like you said earlier on, you know, Mike Villaley says start with a bang and end, end with, with a banger. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You got it. Surprise the judges on the way in, surprise them on the way out. So that's what I was doing wrong all these years. <laughs> Switch tail side, 270 out. Yeah, it just, he, he's, he barely fell. His you know? technical ability over the last three days um, was remarkable. Yeah, and then he manned up with that switch back on 80 down the five, pulls it in the middle of the session. Vincent tries to follow with the kick flip, breaks his board. That might have been where things went a little upside down. That was actually on someone else's board, the <laughs> next trick, and he landed. He didn't even check how tight the trucks were. No. It, it didn't even matter at all. And Aurelio did the same thing. You see that heel flip in, he almost didn't get enough pop, but just powered it through. There's a few skaters out there with so much power that even when they don't get the pop they need, they just power it through it and still land. Aurelian's one of those. And then we see Trev. No slide, big spin. Oh, this one. That, that was, was the mind melter. <laughs> yeah. What it, the heck? It landed, it landed uh, the wrong way and <laughs> bounced around. How he even caught that, I, yeah. I don't know, but half, I don't know how Aurelian does half the things he does. And here we go with the three minute into the two minute mark, and Aurelian's starting to get a little flustered. He can't land that 360 flip. We talked about how you can't get stuck and fixated on one trick. Meanwhile, Trev stuck, behind, like, stuck with it. Snuck up behind him and did a switch 360 flip down the big five that we just saw. So, you know, a big surprise for the crowd, a big surprise for everyone. That was the second board that he snapped. I think it was the third, actually. Oh, this is the winner of the women. You just saw a Leticia Buffoni taking it out. And in the men's, the third spot. It's the crowd favorite. Everyone absolutely <laughs> loved him. Yeah, an award I think, from I the think one France and only would be Pierre on Andre. fire if Vincent won this contest, but everyone was still stoked because a uh, great showing I from him and Aurelion. Yeah, Aurelion and gives his board to a kid. Look at his face. He was in shock that one of the world's <laughs> best skateboarders Paris, just gave his board away. Yeah. And it's coming in in first place, there you are, Chris, bringing it home. <laughs> he can't believe it at all. He's not a contest skater. What an absolute amazing contest. Uh, Red Bull conquest here in Paris. Yeah, great job from Trevor You won the first ever Paris Conquest competition. What are you feeling right now? I mean, I don't even know what's going on. I shouldn't even be up here. <laughs> And there you go. <laughs> Trevor McClung takes it out. Leticia Buffoni in the women's. What an epic contest. Hopefully this can happen again. It's Red Bull Paris Conquest.